Let me welcome you, my dear students. This is our sixth learning session of short fictional narratives with B.S. English, third semester. Dear students, if you remember what we did last time, we tried to learn the themes of hearts and hand in our previous lecture. Now we are going to discuss the outline that today we will discuss the introduction to Guy de Maupassant. the title significance of the necklace and its plot analysis setting character literary elements and themes we are also going to discuss the introduction to leo tolstoy and the title significance of three questions we are also going to discuss its plot analysis setting characters literary elements and themes now we are going to discuss the introduction to guy de maupassant my dear students He was born on August fifth, eighteen fifty, in Normandy, France. He was popular French writer in the nineteenth century. He was considered one of the fathers of the short story. Most of his works were about everyday life of the simple, humble people. He has a fine use of irony, so we can say that his style was direct and simple. He only lived for forty-three years because of illness, so he was died in Paris on July sixth, eighteen ninety-three. If we talk about his famous works, so he wrote novels and short stories. The famous novels are Envy, Bellamy, Morial, Pierre Etienne, Pour Comme L'Amour, North Khakiar. If we talk about the short stories, so he wrote. Bordesoif, Contents, Dila Bi Kias, Vivid, Thuan, La Piti Khak, Lihola, and the Lihola Di, Lihor Di Madam Huthan. So it was about his famous works. Now we are going to discuss the short story. So if we talk about the necklace we can simply say that the title of Guy de Maupassant's short story refer to the centerpiece of the narrative and the object that is the catalyst for Mathilde Loisel and his difficult life sorry and her difficult life so if we talk about the method is depicted as a disgruntled superficial woman who valued status and appearance when her husband receives an invitation to a party so it was about the title significance now we are going to discuss the plot analysis of the necklace so if we talk about the exposition the exposition of the story is when mathel louis louisel so the miss louisel or mathel louisel and her husband are introduced they live a modest life mathel desire to be rich and is not happy with her life So, if we talk about the rising action, the rising action of the necklace is when Mathilde and her husband receives an invitation to a party, where there will be lots of rich people. Rather than being happy, Mathilde says that she cannot go because she has nothing to wear. She wants a new dress. Her husband gives her money for a new dress, but now she is unhappy because she has no jewelry to wear. she borrows a necklace from madam forestry so if we talk about the rising action that method go to the party and means she goes to the party and has a wonderful time it is a time she will remember forever as she and her husband return home method suddenly realizes the that she has lost madam forestry's necklace when they cannot find the necklace method and her husband sacrifices everything even their future to restore the lost necklace they work for 10 long years to pay for the necklace if we talk about the climax so the climax of the story is when after 10 years of sacrifices method and her husband finally pay off the debt If we talk about the falling action, the falling action of the necklace is when after the uh, after the necklace has been paid off, Mathilde decides to tell Madame Forestier about all the years she slaved to replace the diamond necklace. 
if you talk about the resolution the resolution of the story is when the outcome of the story is that madam foresty informed mother that the necklace she wore to the party was not real diamonds but a fake so it was about the plot analysis of the story if you talk about the mood and setting so mood is excitement stress and grief method work for whole life to pay for a necklace that she borrowed and lost she kept the truth from madam foresty uh, who owns the necklace uh, she tells her the truth when she finally has enough money to replace it if we talk about the setting the necklace took place in paris during the late 19th century so the specific setting include madam loisel apartment and her friend madam forestry home the ball street and the detail scene created by the madam or method loisel's imagination so it was about the mood and setting if you talk about the characters the first character is method loisel she is a beautiful woman sorry she is a beautiful woman who yearns for a life of luxury and wealth when she is invited to a fancy party she borrows a necklace from the wealth or wealthy friend madam uh, foresty and she refuses to go to the party without expensive jewelry and beautiful gown after a night of happiness during which she uh, we can say that the immerses herself in the life of glamour that she believes she deserves she spent the next 10 years paying for her fleeting happiness as a result of losing the borrowed necklace the next character is the morcia the morcia loisel so we can say that that uh, the met, he is the method devoted husband who is content with his humble lifestyle he finds it's completely incomprehensible that method does not accept their lifestyle nandilas he appears her desire for glamour and fun because he wishes for her to be happy the next character is madam foresty so madam foresty she is the method's wealthy friend every time method visit her method is consumed with jealousy we can say that the madam foresty lends method the necklace for the party eventually we discover that the necklace contained fake diamond so it was about the characters now we are going to discuss the literary element we can simply say that the necklace is told by a omniscient third person narrator and the narrator does have access to the character's thought if we talk about the symbols the necklace is the center symbol of the story so we can say that the necklace appears expensive but it is false it is symbol of the deceptiveness of appearances method is as fake as the necklace because she want to appear rich although she is not the necklace comes to represent method um, sorry madam loisel greed and also her artificiality if we talk about the irony in the society that so highly valued appearances it is ironic that ironic that ya yeah, irony that the beautiful madam or we can say the method loisel is excluded from society because of her class standing the greatest irony of all however comes during the story surprise ending so if you talk about the themes there are three themes are found in it the appearance versus reality rich versus poor and generosity versus greed if we talk about the appearance versus reality madam loisel is pretty and charming but she is also unhappy with her lot means with her beautiful life so she believes that she deserves more so uh, she uh, the appearances that she is beautiful but her reality is she is not because she is unhappy appearance apparently 
we see that the uh, we can say that the uh, madam uh, uh, simple is that the madam uh, Rishi is a rich woman but in reality she also wears the uh, fake necklace of diamond so if you talk about the rich versus poor madam lois Loisel believed that the beautiful things and luxurious are essential to her happiness is the untruth that scars her physical beauty. If we talk about generosity versus greed, so Madam Loisel greed stands in market, or in mar we can simply say that it is mark contra mark contrasted to the generosity of her husband and Madam Forestry. So these are the themes of the necklace. Now we are going to discuss the introduction, the introduction to Leo Tolstoy. So he was born on uh, September 9th, 1828. And if we talk about his death, that he was died on 20th, 20th November 1910 at the age of 82 years. So we can simply say that he was a novelist considered one of the most important writer of world literature. He is Russian novelist regarded as one of the greatest of all the time. He is known as a great realistic writer of world literature. If we talk about his famous works, his famous works are War and Peace, Anne, Karenina, A Confession, and resurrection. Now we are going to discuss the title significance of the three questions. So my dear students, if we talk about the three questions, the title of three question is an appropriate title with a note of suspense and clear applicable or uh, we can say that the applicability to them. The story is about the three questions that troubled a certain Tazaz mind. So the Tazaz was intelligent and honest. He was haunted with the three issues that a good and intelligent rule must solve family. So this is about the title significance. Now we are going to discuss the plot analysis. The plot analysis of the three questions. Now we are going to discuss the exposition. If we talk about the exposition, the exposition of the story is the emperor asked the three important questions in his kingdom. One day it occurred to a certain emperor that if he only knew the answer to three questions, he would never stray in any matter. The first one is what is the best time to do each thing? Who are the most important people to work with? What is the most important thing to do at all time? The emperor issued a decree throughout his kingdom announcing that whoever could answer the questions would receive a great reward. So it was about the exposition. Now we are going to discuss the rising action. If we talk about the rising action, the rising action is a story is when the emperor asked the hermit for the first time. Simple, he got many men to try to give him the right answers, but they did not. So the emperor appeared him and said, I have come here to ask your help with three questions. When it is best time to do each thing, who are the most important people to work with? What is the most important thing to do all at all the times? So he got many people many men but no one is able to answer this question now we are going to discuss the climax so the climax of the story is when the hermit and the king saw the beard man bleeding and the king ran to help so it is quite simple a wounded man came he ran widely uh, pressing his head sorry pressing his hands against a bloody wound in the stomach, the man ran toward the emperor before falling unconscious to be to the ground where the lay groaning. So it was about the climax. 
Now we are going to discuss the following action. The following action is when of the story is when the king took care of a man and they fall, they fell asleep. The emperor learned the true nature of the wounded wounded man and happy to see that he was so easily reconciled with a former enemy. You do not know me, my majesty, but I know you. I was your sworn enemy and I had vowed to take vengeance on you. For during the last war you killed my brother and seized my property. If I had if I had not met you, I would surely be dead by now. I had intended to kill you, but instead you saved my life. I am ashamed and grateful beyond words. So if I live, I vow to be your servant for the rest of my life and I will bid my children and grandchildren to do the same. Please grant me your forgiveness. So this is about the falling action. Now we are going to discuss the resolution. The resolution of the story is when the hermit answered his questions. The hermit finally answered the emperor's question that he has already told by the hermit. Remember that there is only one important time and that is now. The present moment is the only time over which we have domination or which we have the dominion. So the most important person is always the person you are with who is right before you. For who knows if so, so you can simply say that for who knows if you will have dealing with any other person in the future the most important pursuit is making the person standing at your side happy for that alone is the pursuit of life so this is all about the resolution so it was about the plot story of the uh, sorry plot analysis of the story now we are going to discuss the characters the first character is the emperor so emperor is the protagonist so someone who is we can say the unyielding to solve problem humble and kind it is shown in the story that he did in the royal decree to climb the hill to meet the hermit he also cons we can say the costumed him cloth with a farmer the next character is the hermit someone who is wise mysterious he means to give an answer very real very, very uh, reality but he give an answer with his own way the next character is the swan enemy a man who was seriously injured on horseback initially it want to kill the emperor he uh, we say that the he described in the story he was one of who admit his guilt so it was about the characters now we are going to discuss the mood so the mood in the story is a curious if you talk about the setting the setting of the story means the story took place in a medieval time in the kingdom of a certain king the majesty of the story take place in the forest in the kingdom where the hermit lives the setting of the story is not necessarily a major plot point because anyone anywhere could have these questions if we talk about the symbol there are two symbols the beds the king digs up so this it they symbolizes the most important time the present time so it also symbolizes most important business which was doing good if we talk about the bearded man's wound so it also symbolized the most important time because he would be dead if he had not helped him the very moment so it is what made the king means it is the time when king made a an sorry an enemy to uh, or in, he converts an enemy into friends so it was about the symbol now we are going to discuss the theme so we can simply say that the theme of the knowledge and we are found the um, many themes in it 
the uh, the first one is the wisdom knowledge awareness kindness forgiveness acceptance and abandonment of self interest if we talk about the theme of knowledge is self evident in the story for that is exactly what the king is looking for he is looking for the knowledge or know how that will ensure that his time is spent more effectively however the king is looking uh, looking out the answers which the hermit, hermit tells him about the answer within the king so he and the actions toward the beard man we can simply say that we can simply say that the wisdom is shown by the hermit and it was the hermit a uh, wisdom who tells the answers of the king now we are going to discuss the knowledge so it is the knowledge of self evidence of the story it is the knowledge of the hermit who who gave the knowledge to the king about the questions so uh, if you talk about the awareness so it was about the awareness of uh, the uh, we can simply say that the enemy who aware the uh, who aware the king that he was his first he was his enemy now he is his uh, we can say that his friend who who simply say that uh, please forgive me and i want to be your servant so uh, we can simply say that the next theme is the kindness it is the kindness of the king who helped the wounded man and uh, it is the time when he uh, he convert his enemy into his friend so it is about the next theme is the forgiveness so uh, we can simply say that the king is so kind person who forgive the uh, the person who is his bad enemy so the next one is the acceptance it is the acceptance of the, uh, the person or wounded person who 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 say that i first i was your enemy but now i am uh, we can say that i am regret on that on that things that i was your bad enemy so if you talk about the uh, abandonment of self interest so tolsey tolsey highlight through the story is abandon uh, abandonment of the self interest for the good of other because fulfillment in life can only be attained by serving other the king act as the mouthpiece of several other people who also search for the purpose of life often we do not see what lesson life offers and try to search for meaning in other things but only in vain from the story it is evident that one must look into his or her life for most of the difficult phase this is because of surrounding the people we live with and our own action pave the way of our happiness so this is about the themes that we have discussed in it now we are going to discuss the uh, review of the lecture that today we have discussed two short stories the necklace and the three questions so we have discussed the introduction to mapson title significance of necklace plot analysis setting characters literary element and themes in the necklace we have also we we are we have also discussed the introduction to leo tolstoy tolstoy and the title significance of three questions plot analysis setting characters literary elements and theme in the three questions so it was about our lecture thank you so much allah hafiz